Welcome you all to part uh, 6 of nuclei that is types of decay. Decay takes place in an unstable nucleus. Always an unstable nucleus wants to become stable and in that process it emits certain kinds of radiation. Based upon the types of radiations emitted, decay can be classified into three types, alpha decay, beta decay and gamma decay. If from an unstable nucleus alpha particle is emitted, then that decay is called as alpha decay. What is alpha particle? It is a particle which consists of two protons and two neutrons. It is similar to helium nucleus, that is why let me take alpha 2, 4. Right? If this particle is emitted, then the decay is called as alpha decay. If beta particle is emitted from the nucleus, then that decay is called as beta decay and the beta particles are of two types. One is electron and the one is positron. Electron is a particle whose charge is minus one, mass is zero. If this particle is emitted, then that decay is called as beta minus decay. And instead of electron, positron is emitted. A positron is a particle similar to electron but positive in charge. So plus one zero. If this particle is emitted, then that kind of decay is called as beta plus decay. Whenever electron is emitted, it is always accompanied by a particle called antineutrino. And whenever the positron is emitted, it is always accompanied by a particle called neutrino. And what are these particles? These particles are invisible and they are not having charge as well as mass. But these particles are accompanied with electron and positron to conserve the energy and the spin momentum. So this type of decay is called as beta decay. If from an unstable nucleus electromagnetic radiation is emitted, then that decay is called as gamma decay. Gamma radiations do not have any charge or mass, that is why we can write gamma 0, 0. And this type of decay is called as gamma decay. And if we compare the properties of the particles which are emitted from the radioactive nucleus, which particle is heavy? Alpha particle is heavy because it is having mass of 4 mu. Since it is heavy, it cannot travel more. But gamma, it is the lightest particle which is emitted in here, right? So it is having more penetration power. It can penetrate through the concrete walls. That's why it is having high penetrating power. Alpha, since it is heavy, it is having low penetrating power. And penetrating power of uh, beta is in between alpha and gamma. And uh, if we compare with the charge, Alpha is having more charge, that is 2E. That is why when alpha is passed through a gas, it can ionize the gas. So it is having high ionizing power and uh, gamma, since it is not having any charge, it is having low ionizing power. And ionizing power of the beta is in between alpha and gamma. So these are some of the properties of the particles which are emitted during the decay. Now, let us understand alpha decay in detail. Alpha decay takes place usually in the heavier nucleus. If I am taking this is a nucleus whose atomic number is Z and mass number is A. When alpha particle is emitted, alpha particle whose atomic number is 2 and mass number is 4, alpha particle is similar to helium nucleus. When this kind of particle is emitted, definitely there will be change in the nucleus. Why there will be change in the nucleus? Because there will be change in the atomic number. So X, Z, A changes to Y, Z minus 2, A minus 4. Since two protons are released, so Z changes to Z minus 2 and A changes to A minus 4, right? So two protons and two neutrons are emitted, that's why A changes to A minus 4. So let me call this nucleus as perinucleus and let me call this nucleus as daughter nucleus. Whenever an alpha particle is emitted, atomic number decreases by 2 and the mass number decreases by 4. Let us take an example for heavier nucleus, that is uranium. Uranium 92, 238. When alpha particle is in there, 92 reduces to 90, 238 reduces to 234. And if you check which nucleus has atomic number 90, that is thorium. That is how uranium converts into thorium when alpha particle is emitted. When alpha particle is emitted, it has kinetic energy. And how that alpha particle get that kinetic energy? That energy was released due to the mass defect which arises in this reaction right if you take the mass of uranium and mass of thorium plus alpha particle there will be a mass defect and we know that if there is mass defect it should have converted into energy according to einstein's mass energy relation and that energy is utilized by daughter nucleus as well as alpha particle in the form of kinetic energy and this is the energy which is released during this uh, reaction let me call it as q value Right. So this is the Q value which is released due to mass defect which has arised here. Right. Okay. This was all about alpha decay. Let us move on to the beta decay now. Here. 
Now let us understand about beta decay. Beta decay are of two types, beta minus and beta plus. So let us start with beta minus decay. Beta minus decay takes place if number of neutrons is greater than the number of protons and that makes the nucleus unstable. So from this nucleus an electron is emitted and with that antineutrino particle is emitted. The question arises, electron is not present inside the nucleus itself but how it can emit electron. Do you remember here? During beta minus decay, electron is generated inside the nucleus. How it is generated? Let us check it out. As number of neutrons is greater than the number of protons, neutron will convert into proton. Okay, what happens if neutron is converted into proton? So later, let us check it out. 0 and 1 charge. We should get a particle to balance this. It should have minus 1 right here charge. And the mass 1, 1 mass should be 0. And which is that particle right here? Electron. That is how electron is generated inside the nucleus and it is sent outside right here, right? So, when it is sent outside, this nucleus will become stable in here, right? So let us check it out. This is a perinucleus, that is a Z in here, right? When electron is emitted here, right? If I take, this is an electron, which is emitted in here, then to balance this, here it is Z, here it is minus 1, here it should be Z plus 1 to balance the equation in here. Here it is A, here it is 0, and we should get A itself, right? So that is why. When beta minus decay takes place, atomic number increases by 1 and mass number remains the same. Let us take an example here. If I am taking a phosphorus, that is a 15, 32, it emits electron outside of here, right? So when electron is emitted, right, that is called as beta minus decay, so atomic number increases by 1, that is 16, and mass number remains the same, that is 32. And if you check it out, 16 is the nucleus of sulfur. That is how phosphorus is converted to sulfur now here by the emission of electron right so this kind of decay is called as beta minus decay now let us understand about uh, beta plus decay beta plus decay takes place in the nucleus where number of protons are greater than the number of neutrons which make made it unstable okay here protons converts into neutrons that is how the positron is emitted whenever positron is emitted neutron is also emitted down here right okay when proton converts into neutron, what happens now here? Proton charge is 1, mass is 1. Neutron charge is 0, mass is 1. Right? To, convert, uh, to balance this, there should be a particle whose charge is plus 1 and mass is 0. And which is that particle? That is positron. So always a positron is emitted. And with that positron, neutrino is emitted. Let us take a, a example here. Let us take a perinuclear. Let us take a general example. That is ZA. Right? When positron is emitted, plus 1, 0, what should be the atomic number here? Z minus 1, so that it gets balanced right here, right? So what should be the mass? It should be A itself, right? right? And uh, so always, whenever beta plus decay takes place, whenever the positron is emitted, atomic number decreases by 1 and uh, mass number remains the same, right? Okay, let us take an example, that is sodium 11, 22. Whenever this sodium emits positron, it converts into neon, whose uh, atomic number is 10 and mass number is 22. Here, atomic number decreased by 1, uh, that is 10, and if you check it out, it is the nucleus of the neon, right? So the positron is emitted, that is plus 1, 0, and neutrino is also emitted. And neutrino is emitted for the conservation of energy and spin momentum. Because of these reasons, this kind of particles are emitted. Okay, let us move on to the last one, that is gamma decay. Gamma decay takes place whenever the nucleus is in the excited stage. So already we have discussed after alpha and beta decay, this gamma decay takes place. So the, if the nucleus is in the excited state, it comes to the ground state by emitting certain kind of radiations. That radiation is nothing but gamma radiations, right? This electromagnetic wave, it does not have any charge and mass. And this kind of radiations are emitted to come to the ground state, right? So let us check it out. Since it is not having any charge and any mass, there will be no change in the atomic number and there will be no change in the mass number. Just there will be change in the state from excited to ground state. Let us take an example for it. Cobalt 27, 16. Right? It is a beta emitter. When it emits beta, atomic number increases by 1. That is 28. Mass number emits the same. That is 60. And that is a watch nickel here. But this is an excited state. As atoms has different energy level. Even nucleus also will have a different energy level. Right? So this is the excited state. And it should come to the ground state. When nickel from the excited state comes to the ground state, it emits certain kind of radiation. So by emitting this gamma radiations, it comes to the ground state. And this kind of decay is called as gamma decay. Right. Thank you.